It's Wednesday. Do you notice anything different? I'm not going to say. <laughs> I'm not going to say anything. I'm going to see if anyone says anything first. Can you tell? I'll give you a little bit of time to kind of get in the groove and be on. Um, Wednesday. I'm Teacher Marisa. You get me for one whole hour. Yay! What's going on in your world? It actually snowed here yesterday. It was so pretty. It was so Wonderful. pretty. And I got to drive in it for a little bit. Um, it kind of got a little slushy, um, but it was still um, super pretty. Um, today I'm actually going to tell a story a little bit with my designs. Um, kind of like a progression, how I always do. I've actually been watching Top Chef a lot lately, just the older um, episodes. And always on their final uh, meal, they always say to tell a story. So that's kind of where my inspiration came from. Um, and we're going to start with my walk to work because it's kind of like dark in the morning. And then as the day goes on, it gets a little brighter and then the sun comes out. So that's why I'm going to be working with a lot of yellows and some flowers for sunshine. That's my story. Don't forget to put in your tulip. We want to know who you are and say hi to everybody. If you're a first timer, please introduce yourself and we'll welcome you here. Let's see, what else? Did anyone notice what's happening with my face? Nobody has chimed in yet. Oh, come on. No, no one? They're still saying hi and checking in over here. Do you guys notice? Well, I have new glasses, but here's the question for you. Can anyone figure out my purchasing factor why I got these glasses. Let's see if anyone can guess that. Um, okay, so moving forward, um, the topic today is, got to look at my notes here to make sure I'm telling you the correct thing, is tips for success for our online program and the most common oopsie daisies that we see that our students do. So we're just gonna kind of go over um, that. Did anyone figure out the purchasing factor on why I bought these? I am not seeing it yet, I think. Has anyone even commented? Do you guys not like my new glasses? John likes them, John okay. says dig the glasses. Thanks John. <laughs> okay, well, the reason why I bought these glasses Dun, 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 is they glow in the dark. How cool. So yes, when Leanne uh, came in and Michelle, I'm like, you gotta come in the bathroom. So we kind of go in the bathroom and I turned off the lights and they're like, wow. So yes, they actually glow in the dark. And on my way to work this morning when it was dark, I could actually like see the glow. They're pretty cool. So, okay. So let's see. I would say um, the most common, I don't want to say necessarily mistake, but really it's just following the instructions. So make sure you go through um, each submission and actually read what Leanne is requesting to complete the segment. I'll go into that in a little bit more detail, but it's just really following the instructions. And if you have any questions ever, if you ever have a little bit of doubt, you can always, always call us. We're always here, that's what we're here for. You have 100% teacher support. Call, email, we're here. Okay, oh, here's another one that I get from you a lot, the text. I get a lot of emails and calls about, what is the text that Leah talks about all the time? The text is what's actually included in the course under the review portion in each uh, segment. So we, we don't send you a book, your text is in the course. So I think, does that mean it's totally digital so they can view it anywhere at any time? Yeah, the course is totally digital. You can, if you wanna go on vacation and take your laptop with you or view it on the phone, just as long as you have an uh, internet, you can view it at any time, anywhere. Yes, if you wanna do it at three o'clock in the morning, you can. Michelle. Well, we have two first timers that I've seen and I want you to give them a shout out. I will. One is Stephanie and Hi, the Stephanie. other is Clea. She's also a new student in the online classes. Hi, Stephanie and Clea. Thanks Hi, for Clea. joining. I got, to, I got to talk to you. I got to actually register her for class. Yay, welcome. So this is actually gonna be super um, informative for you all, um, you two, and also everyone else that's out there um, to just kind of get a jump start on the on the do's and don'ts. Okay, so I'm gonna start off with this 
container and I have some curly willow inside and there's actually a little story that goes behind this. This is actually probably about five months old, this piece. And what happened was uh, we had a whole bunch of this curly willow. It was getting crispy and I needed to throw it away and it was too big to put in the trash can. So this one was really long and I bent it over my knee to, to make it fit in the trash can and it bent just like this. And I'm like, oh, this is kind of cool. I can use this kind of as a wedged mechanic to put into something that's influenced by the Ikebana design style. Can anyone kind of guess what that is? Let's see. I know. Oh, well, yeah, but that's not fair. <laughs> Let's give the Tulip Tribe a chance. <laughs> yes, Leanne. Well, I finally am catching up with the comments, and Janet was the very first to find that you had new glasses, and Thanks, she Janet. did it before you told them. Thanks, I'm Janet. just finally catching up, so we have a little here. Yes, the new glasses. Oh, oh, and I've got answers. Oh, Ooh, I got okay. Answers. What were you told them to answer? Oh, the, the oh, not the glow in the dark thing, but yeah, go for it. Kubari. Yes, Kubari is correct. Elisa yes. and Sharon, boom, boom, just right in there with that. Good job. Yep, Kubari. So, oh, also too, all the designs I'm doing today are foam free, so no foam not even floral netting. Everything is just going to be weaved in. Yeah. Okay, so let's talk about one of the first whoopsie daisies that we see. And this is just cool, just like this. Uh, I would buy it just like that. But anyways, um, your, butt oh. face. <laughs> your butt vase for your final exam, okay? Is your butt vase an actual bud vase or is it an arrangement like a little arrangement or an accent piece that's what we see a lot sometimes not a, a true bud vase so make sure again it's just following the instructions um, so always refer back to the course that you can like we said before all the time you can refer back anytime so for this one is going to be inspired by the bud vase just checking to see height wise, because you know me, I always like to go really tall. This is not a bud vase, but it's gonna be inspired by. You've got about three inches before you're off camera. Well, let's yeah. just see where I go. <laughs> let's see how this works. Okay. So Rose Study says she's almost done with her basic course and going to get back to it after the busy Valentine. Ooh. Wait, Ro I thought Rose already graduated. She says almost done. And okay. Jillian said she just got feedback on her first submission ever. Very helpful. Thank you, Teacher Michelle. Oh, well, yay! yay. Good. You did a good job, Jillian. <laughs> did you hear that? She said you did a good job. So did you see how I just weaved that through here? And it's stabilized. Isn't that cool? Okay, I'm just going to turn this around. You know, Marisa, you repeated that for them after Michelle had talked, and I got an email from someone a couple of days ago that That's said, right. you know, it'd be really helpful if we repeated questions. Oh, so yes. So if we say something, yep. before you answer, repeat it. I sure will. I will. So now I'm just going to add in some heather. This is probably one of my favorite filler flowers, just to add a little bit of texture and contrast. You know, I used to really like this knife, but it hasn't been cutting very well. Some to the back here. Okay, I am also gonna be making this design one-sided to be, to be really enjoyed from one side. So that is another oopsie daisy we see sometimes with one-sided submissions. We see the, um, students actually putting flowers on the back side, which really defeats the purpose because a one-sided design is meant to be seen from one side. So if you think about the arrangement going up against a wall, having flowers on the back side, the customer is not going to be able to see that. So by placing everything towards the front gives the arrangement full visual value. Okay, so let's place in another rose. 
I'm going to turn this around and just stagger it, just zigzagging. Let's see, what side should we put this on? Maybe this side. Rose finished advanced, but she wants to get FBI certified, so she's going Doing back the chat. To okay, so she's, okay, that's what I was like, I think she, because Rose, she was the one, yeah, she did, um, she did a really cool arrangement. She actually was doing um, abstract placements. So multiple binding points, but they crossed. It was really, really cool. I think that's the rose that. I think you are correct. Yeah. Okay, so this is just a little too tall. So I just want to stagger a little bit to create some rhythm. So you can see, for those of you that have taken the online course, and if you go back to the bud vase segment, this is very similar to what Leanne does. Yes, Leanne. Karen wants to know, when they do a bud vase for their final exam, mm -hmm. can it be any blossom or does it have to be a rose? It, that's a really, really great question. So that question is, for the bud vase, can they use something else besides roses? Yes. However, my suggestion would be to use mass flowers or uh, more of a primary flower, roses, uh, carnations, Gerber daisies. If you use things that are more fillery, like mini carnations or spray roses, those are more secondary flowers. Um, so I would go more along the lines of doing more mass flowers. So she was asking that potentially part two of the question, a bird of paradise? Well, you could, absolutely. You could use a bear, a, excuse, a bear, a bear of paradise, a bird of paradise. Absolutely, yeah. However, just make sure, because those are big. So make sure, because bud, vase, bud vases are typically um, really skinny and small. So you want to make sure it's balanced and the scale isn't too big. Let's so, see. Marisa, yeah. another bud vase question. Mm -hmm. Do I have to have three in it? Do you have to have three? Three is like the maximum. Because once you start putting more, um, it starts to become an arrangement. Um, so typically I would stop at three. Great question. Oh, and also two, what happens is when you start to put, because again, it's, it's a very, very small container and the more you put in there, it's gonna drink so much of that water. And especially if you just have three roses, you'd be quite surprised to see how much three roses actually drink. All right, so I'm just gonna place some hypericum down at the bottom here, just to, are you guys laughing at me? No, I'm just trying to keep up whether I'm on Facebook or YouTube and I'm confusing myself. Welcome to our world, Leanne. I don't know, I don't know exactly. what I'm going to do this, oh, Okay. So I think I'm gonna place one more hypericum just to the back a little bit, just to create some depth. And I'm gonna remove this one little leaf here because it's kind of getting a little, little bushy there at the bottom. And then that leaf is broken. And I think, I think I'm done. So just a simple, in, inspired by a bud vase. So definitely here is definitely um, very similar to a bud vase, but the, this vase typically wouldn't be um, used for a bud vase, but yeah, just something simple to start off. So just moody, a little moody in the morning when I'm walking to work. Um, this was representing the dark outside and just maybe the sun kind of peeking out. Yeah, I know you're like, really Marisa? But yeah, that's what my mind thinks of. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to move this one aside. They're loving we'll it. We'll start on the next let's, one. If you guys like it, let's give her some hearts and do a thumbs up on YouTube. Do the thumbs up if you like what you saw. Absolutely. Same on Facebook. And I have an excellent question. Yes. From Clea, one of our new students. Yes. She said, do students have access to see other students' submissions or are they just shared through social media? She wants to see Rose's abstract design. Oh, okay, Rose. So did you hear that? Rose, you're going to have to share your picture on the Tulip Tribe page. And I'm sorry, what was her name again? Clea. 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 So Clea, we have a Tulip Tribe page on Facebook that is only for our Tulip, our Tulips. Um, so go ahead and go there and join. Um, that's where students share their work. 
So you can't like share platforms or your dashboards, but that's where um, everyone um, networks with each other and shares their, their work. Okay, let's see. Um, we'll just move forward to this one. Look how cool this is. So I'm gonna take this off. So I have this beautiful vase here. I just love clear glass. It's just so clean and pretty and sparkly. Just love it. And one of our, and I, and I, I can only assume she's watching. Leanne, do you the, remember the woman's name that dropped this off? All that curly willow. Oh, I think it starts with a J. No, it's um, it's Oscanite. No. Was she she worked she used to work for the the Rose Festival. Oh yes 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 yes. Oh, I I'm think it starts with a J or a G. G oh. Gail, I'm so sorry I can't remember your name, but she dropped this off and she gave us tons of curly willow. And I just want to, if you're watching, thank you, and also want to share the story. Um, and if you guys could see the pile that we have, I mean we're like tripping over it and getting caught in it, <laughs> um, but her pile of curly willow started literally with one piece that she got in a flower arrangement and it started rooting and she put it outside and now it's just invading her yard so she's like she emailed Leanne and she's like i'm gonna come over and bring in my stuff and we're like bring it on over so as i was fighting with all the curly willow trying to like put it off to the side um found this piece and i absolutely loved it okay so what I'm going to do is just place this right in and it's just, it balances right in there perfectly. All right. So I'm actually going to turn this one around and there's this one piece here that actually, let me undo it. I feel so weird not having my mask on right now. I feel like I'm going to get in trouble or something. <laughs> uh, okay. So I'm going to wrap this around just to create a little bit more stability. Um, and also if this comes undone, I don't want it to like whip into my face. So just kind of twisting it on to itself here. Okay. All right. So again, I'm going to make this one one sided. I tend to do one sided a lot. I don't know why I just, I just do. Uh, okay. What about this material? And this is very, very seasonal and I always forget about it. But when it comes in season, I'm like, Oh yeah, I love that stuff. This is acacia. Isn't it so pretty? You know, the class got to work with that yesterday. Yes, the class so did. Fun. It was special time for them. Turn this back around this way. No, actually, I like it this way. While you're working, um, Teacher Michelle, you got a note on here from Elaine. She said, thank you for your suggestions, and she's going to rework her Ikebana ah. following your suggestions. Oh, wonderful. Well, good, Elaine. I want to see that new picture. <laughs> So Elaine is going to resubmit her Ikebana, correct? Yeah, is that what, you, yes. So that brings me to, look at how it just sits in there perfectly. Oh, my oh God. wow, that's beautiful. Isn't it though? And look, this piece, and all I'm doing is just weaving in and it's just following the lines of these. Okay, this is done too. <laughs> I love this just, I'm, you, you all know me, I'm a very s simplistic designer, but it's so just the line and the space and the texture and you know, you, you know you have to do that when you design, right? You have to kind of do that dance up. Okay. <laughs> um, you okay. always got to dance. Okay, so speaking of the Ikebana, again, f following instructions. So when you get to the Ikebana interpretation segment in the online course, that's the, 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 the portion of the course where we talk about linear design. So make sure in the instructions to read, okay? Because in that segment, Leanne teaches you how to do a vertical arrangement. A lot of the times we, and we're asking for an interpretive Ikebana design to complete that segment. So make sure you submit an Ikebana inspired not the vertical, okay? So that's another whoopsie daisy. All right, gonna go over here. Now I'm just gonna place in a hydrangea right here just to create a little bit of a focal point here. Yes, Leanne. The curly willow was from Judy. Yay! See, oh, I knew it was a J. Thank yes. you, Judy. So she's on? Um, I don't know, but I finally found my note. Okay, I go ahead. I know, I know. <laughs> Thank you, Judy, if you're 
Ron, thank you. And Nicole wanted to say she loves acacia. It reminds her of her home, which is Australia, Ooh. where they call it Kutamundra waddle. What? Kutamundra waddle. Waddle? Like, yeah, yeah, like like a duck's like a duck's kind of. Yeah. So I want to know what a kutamundra is. Yeah, 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 yeah. Huh? Interesting. I think this piece down here did it break. It actually didn't. Um, however, I'm gonna actually remove that because it looks like it broke, and I don't want the customer. Is that the pruning technique? It's the pruning technique. <laughs> Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and remove that, and yeah, let's it looks just. Funny on camera too, so good okay. <laughs> All right, so let's move this, and let's just. I don't know. Maybe we can add it right about here. Okay. Also, my inspiration is Scott on. Yes. Okay. Um, I did peek on the Tulip Tribe, although I'm not very active on the Tulip Tribe. Oh, I totally stock it. So I see what you guys are talking about. And I saw Scott's um, post and a lot of you comment on sunflowers and how they are really hard to work with. So I was like, oh, I'm going to work with sunflowers. And let's see. Let's watch Marisa struggle on camera. <laughs> yes, Leanne. So everybody does have signature arrangements. And Janet is talking about how she always got chided for doing left-sided arrangements. So my question for Janet is she left-handed or is she dyslexic? Because a lot of times people work to the left if they are either left-handed or dyslexic. Hmm. You also want to know something else that could possibly, because I wonder where she lives, where she's located. She's East Coast, New Jersey. Eh, okay, eh, that's, that's, this probably won't apply. But did you know that us as designers on the West... <laughs> she's dyslexic. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Cool. cool. Or yeah. Not. Um, so us as designers over here on the west part of the world, in the western part, do you notice that mostly we design from heavier on the left? That's because, um, okay, well, let me, let, me, let me go forward. And then on the eastern part, like in Japan, things are typically heavier on the, on the right. Because if you think about when they read, they read from right to left, where we're used to looking from left to right. So typically, design-wise, for us on the western part, we design heavier on the left side. And I guarantee you, if you start looking around your home, like in rooms, you'll have like a bigger vase on this side. You'll notice that the heavier things are on the left. That was a cool little tip that I, I didn't, you know, that's not, I learned that from someone else. <laughs> okay, so let's see. Let's play with these sunflowers. Let's just have you just dance over there. Marisa, John yes. said, yes, Marisa loves simple, as long as it's over the top. Yeah. Oh, just, okay, Let, let's just wait to the last one. <laughs> okay, so let's see. So let's play. Sarah says that Kudamundra is a town in Australia it's an anglicized version of the Aboriginal work Guramundra, which means turtle, and oh. Guramundra is where the waddle is from. And oh. I'm like, oh my gosh, I learn something from the tribe every single week. Yeah, we learn something. We always learn from each other. I don't, I don't care what anyone says. Like, oh, you know, like I know it all. No way. We learn something new every single day. All right. So I'm just gonna turn this around just a bit because it's still a little wonky, all right? And I'm still working on it. But just so you can see, and yes, sunflowers are hard to work with. However, if you kind of just work with, don't fight them. I'm actually gonna place this one to the back a little bit more because we just need a little bit of depth and probably balance, right, Michelle? It's probably, yes. yeah. And question was, would you ever use bind wire to attach it to the curly willow? Ooh. Um, Yes and no. <laughs> um, yes, you can. I actually, I did that. Well, okay. So I did that once uh, when I very first started. It wasn't to Curly Willow, but I was doing an arrangement with Liatris Tall and, a, and then um, a Sunflowers, you know, lower, and it just wasn't going the right way. And I took bind wire, 
well, actually, band wire wasn't invented yet. Then I don't. I think I did floral, actually, air tape, um, and I air taped it to the liatris, and I got in trouble. Um, so. To curly willow, I think it's okay because curly willow is more of an accent, right? Where liatris is more of a, um, I don't want to say money flower, but more of a primary-ish flower. So you don't want to um, take away from that. Yes, Leanne. Well, because we're so international, there's some questions coming up about the acacia. And I'll just kind of answer it because you can keep working. But wattle is a name for it, and mimosa. Mimosa, yes. Is also a name for acacia. So yeah. Yes, it is all of the above. Yeah. Um, teacher Michelle had mentioned that in class that it's also um, called mimosa. Oh, let's see. What else should I put in here? Let's see if this is going to work. Kind of looks like you have the Pantone colors going on. I here. know. That kind of did that on accident. So look at we have. Do you know? Aww. Do you know whose favorite flowers this is? Leanne loves these. Uh, I'm gonna see if they work in here. I don't know if they will, uh, but let's just try. Let's just try to see. And let's look at my notes here while I'm designing. What's another oopsie daisy that we see? Oh, I have one. Um, is your corsage submission a boutonniere? Mm-hmm. That's another one that we see quite often, where we see people, um, whoops, I don't think I'm going to use these because they're so skinny and they just drop through. So I thought I was going to try it, but we're not going to use these. Well, next week, the whole <laughs> live is dedicated to daffodils because I'm on camera and I got to pick my favorite flower. Ah, see? <laughs> So yes, so definitely make sure, again, to just read the instructions because if you are going to, oh, there's one little daffodil leaf in there that we don't want. Um, we don't, I totally lost my train of thought. Michelle's got a question for you. Michelle has a question. I have a question. So actually, and I forgot what I was gonna say anyway. Actually, Karen has a question about the online program. If you get uh when you submit something is there a way to communicate with the teachers if you have a question or if we ask them a question is there a way that they can communicate with us oh yeah you can call or email that's exactly how you get in contact with us um personally uh i like i like it when i actually get to talk to you because it's just easier um i can it's easier for me to verbally explain it than actually think about typing it. So, um, and you know what? Sometimes when you email us, I will end up actually giving you a call um, just because the phone call would be actually easier to explain over the phone. Uh, for instance, I called one of our students actually before we did live today. I don't like this there. Let me just show you why really quick. You can't see the sunflower, they blend in together. So we want to make sure you can see everything on its own. Yes, Leanne. We have a first timer. So <gasps> YouTubers, timer. if you would reach out and give Deborah a little bit of love. But her question is, do you use flower dip? Flower, like quick dip? Quick dip? Um, I do. Um, it just, per, I only use quick dip when the flowers really, really need it. Um, so if something comes in and it's, it looks really thirsty, um, I'll use the quick dip. Um, sometimes, well, I will say with hydrangeas and roses, I tend just to quick dip just anyway. But you know, if Gerbers look a little thirsty, um, Dusty Miller is a really good product to, or material to use quick dip on. It really, really helps. And I will do a shout out to Linda, because she's the one that actually told us about that. So this is almost sort of horizontal-ish. Okay, so going back to uh, corsages and boutonnieres, uh, there is a difference. So you have to think about um, what if, do you see that curve in there? I'm gonna try to really showcase that. Um, what if a customer almost use these instructions that Leanne has given you to complete the course as kind of, kind of uh, use it as a, an order. So if a customer calls and wants a corsage and then you make them a boutonniere, I don't know if they'll be very happy with that. 
So it's not working on this side. Um, you may just have to put it way over here with the other ones. Marisa? Yes? They have questions mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. air taping. Mm. <laughs> what is it? What is it? Well, I'm actually going to throw it right back at you and see if anyone can answer that. And if not, I guess I'll give you the answer. All right. So we're getting pretty tight in here. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this around. Okay. Luann wants to know what shape you would call this design. What is the form? And then Leslie wants to know if you would explain Vespa. I'm sorry, I, I heard what, so I heard. What is the form? form? Yes, and then. And what is Vespa? Okay, yes. The form for this one, I would honestly call this kind of like a free form horizontal. Okay, um, that's what I would call this. Now, when you go into Bespo, this could also be Bespo inst uh, inspired as well. Bespo really means custom made. That's what it means. So really everything that we do as designers is Bespo. Um, however, in floral design, Bespo is just kind of evolved into design wise. Things that are just very flowy and natural, very very blousey looking. Um, so you would think just because it's so effortless looking that it's easy, it's actually really hard to do. It's hard to master. Um, I've actually um, have quite embraced that style. I really, really like it because it's not my type of actually style of design. So I found it a bit hard to do. So because it's challenging, um, I really enjoy it. So this just adds a little bit of drama, a little bit of contrast. And let's see, I'm trying to think if I should put anything else in here. I don't know, because it's getting a bit tight. Let's see, I'm just gonna step back a little bit and see. Hmm. Let's see if any of these bunny tails, I don't think that's gonna go. I think I'm actually done. So I'm just gonna turn that back around again. You put it this way. Can you see it? Yes, Leanne. Debbie wants to know if you would explain how students submit their, their assignments. Okay. Well, I'm going to move this one aside. I hope you guys like this one. Very effortless and happy. Debbie like it. Do a thumbs up and lots of hearts. Give <laughs> Marisa some love. We love Marisa. Yay! Okay. So how? Uh, the question is how? How do you submit your designs? Right? Correct. Okay, so you upload them onto your dashboard. Um, it can be done through your phone or by your computer. So you can either with your phone take a picture and send it that way. Or if you're going to do it on your computer, you could put it onto a Word document or a PDF. Um, we have found that if you're having troubles uploading, taking a screenshot of the actual picture that you took and sending it that way um, seems to help. And you have to submit one at a time. So when you go in, you can't choose all, you can't choose three. You have to click one and then wait for it to upload and then click your next one. Yeah. Okay, another common oopsie daisy is, is your submission an easel or a wreath? We see that one too. So uh, Leanne asks to do a small or large easel spray which is different from the wreath demonstration that she does for you. So again, if a customer calls and says, I would like an easel spray and you sent a wreath, rut row. I don't know if they'd be very happy about that one. Okay, let's see. Um, photographs. Photographs are really, really uh, important because it does help us uh, instructors evaluate um, completely. So make sure you take a picture of the front and the back, as well as uh, the, especially the front, make sure it's a, um, a uh, like head on picture. Don't take it from above, because it's hard to see scale and proportion. So, um, and also make sure that the whole arrangement is in the frame, because if it's only, if it's really close up, um, we can't see. 
and also take it uh, behind a plain background so if there's like pictures and your laundry and you know your bag of chips around it starts to become the arrangement it's really hard to see um, a bag of chips really sounds good right now especially <gasps> cheetos thanks michelle oh, <laughs> you must know <laughs> So, Marisa, yes. Dolores has a good question. Dolores has a question. Yes. When should you start all over again? Is it better to keep adding blooms or stop, take it apart, and do it over? Okay, can you repeat that question? Yes. How do you how do you know when to start over? How do you know when to start over? Okay, that's a really good question. For me, if you're making something and you're just fighting with it, just take it apart and start over. Because... It's because I feel like if you start over, um, you're gonna. It's like a clean slate. It's like you're trying to fix, uh, like you're trying to fix a, a mistake or something. Like if something's broken and you like keep taping it and gluing it, it's just gonna fall apart anyway, right? So I would just start over. Um, and then how do you know when to stop? Like designing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when, when, you, when, when you when you can't fit anything else in the vase, um, when things start to just get really crowded, um, kind of and also just kind of go with your gut, right? Um, yeah. How do you know? What do you think, Michelle? When do you know when to stop? What I tell the students... Well, the price. <laughs> yeah. If you're yeah. over budget, that's when you stop. Ex yeah, exactly. If it's an actual order, price is your determinator. Yeah. Um, if I'm designing for myself and it's kind of like, oh, I think I want this and I think I want that, I follow Coco Chanel's rule. Whatever I put in last was probably one thing too many and I'll take that thing out. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, yeah, definitely the price. Um... And it, and believe it or not, um, say, try it, try this, make, make something. And if it's, if it's, if it's more of a mass type of arrangement, it has a lot of things in it, take out five things. I bet you it'll look, it'll look the same, especially with like foliage and things, maybe even filler, filler flowers. Don't take out your primary flowers. Cause I'm sure that, cause it takes up so much space, but I guarantee you could take out some foliage and filler and it will look the same and you make more money. Okay, look how fabulous this is. Over the top, right? I mean, I could not not play with this one. So I'm gonna do a hand tie with this. Ooh, yeah. Um, okay, so let's see, before I get started, I wanted to give my, myself plenty of time for this one because I really kind of have an idea. And this one's gonna be kind of hard for me uh, because the majority of the weight's gonna be on the left side because this just wants to fall over here and it's really heavy. So I'm gonna have to design over here. Um, let's see. Oh, how about this one? Um, this is not really a boo-boo, but I get this question a lot. What's a vignette? So we ask you with your photographs to take pictures of the front and the back and also a vignette. So that was one of my YouTube questions and I didn't even ask it. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we get that all the time. We get those emails all the time. Um, so a vignette is basically more of a staged photograph. So almost like taking a picture of it, how it would be used in real life. So for an example, um, on your coffee table, or um, some people have gotten really creative. Um, I've seen um, on their dining room table with like a stack of books and like a teapot and like teacups. It's like super cute. So it's just staging it in real life. Okay, so I'm gonna take my magnolia branch and place some of this hop behind it. Really, this is kind of gonna be, um, the materials are gonna be actually kind of layered than actually spiraled or weaved in because again, everything's kind of more to the side. So a shout out to Tomoko, who was an online student from a long time ago, a few years, and she's online with us today. Hi Tomoko! And a question from Deborah: do you find flowers last longer in water or foam? Okay, in my opinion, I personally think they like to be in water better. So that's why 
that's why another factor of why I like to design directly in water. Um, but they, they honestly, as long as the um, vessel that you have in that has the foam, as long as it has water in it, it's really getting the same, getting the same um, hydration. So, but I, I prefer to, to work with water directly. They want to know how you're going to do a hand tie with that. So you I don't, got to I don't know. I don't know. I really have no idea. Uh, we're, we're just starting. Okay, let's see. Looking at my notes here, what else? Oh, okay. And um, Leanne might chime in on this one. So sometimes, which this is okay, some people like to submit all of their submissions at one time. Just all at one time, mm -hmm. which is okay. Mm -hmm. However, you may find when doing that, you may find that you um, get an evaluation of some type of an improvement for next time that you could apply to the next project. So just something to think about. But if you need to, you know, sometimes, you know, flowers, and especially depending on where you live, where you live, Flowers are very hard to um, source right now. So it is okay to go through the whole course first and then purchase in bulk. And then maybe just make the first one really fast. Get your evaluation, because your flowers should last at least five to seven days, okay? So that'll be plenty of time. But that's just something. Um, it's not necessarily a boo-boo. It's just, just in case, um, just to get a little bit, just, just for evaluation to help. So this is, I want it to be more like this, but we're still just going for it. Oh, there's a gonus is fab. So even though you're doing a hand tie here, Marisa, uh -huh. um, had a question about debris in vases. You say you love those clear vases. Uh -huh. One of the students said, I keep getting a lot of debris. Is that because I'm not cleaning them well enough or am I poking stems in and out too much? Um, both, both. So uh, Michelle had asked um, debris in the, uh, how do you basically take to um, eliminate the debris in the, in the vase? So it's, it's probably when you're inserting back and forth, back and forth, it's getting caught on the leaves and it's pushing the leaves down into the vase. Um, or some is not removed. The way to fix that would be, I don't even want to try to lift that out because everything's going to shift. Um, but the key with that would be once you're done with your arrangement, if you can take the whole arrangement out, dump the water out, put in fresh water, and then go back into your arrangement and pick some of, pick everything off. Because you know, you should do that with your vase arrangements especially in clear glass if design in it and then take and then um, take your arrangement out and add new water it will like change it it's just it's clear glass with clean water is fabulous Leanne I can barely see you back there with your hand up oh I know my computer is <laughs> dying I had to move so I can plug it in talk about crazy <laughs> Melissa wants to say thank you for the quick turnaround on her very first submission oh, and it's her Thanks. first time watching live. Oh my gosh! And would you list the materials you're using? They're one oh, of the yeah. that you have. Sure. There. Sure. So I have, hmm, I'm not gonna go over there. Okay, so I have the big branches magnolia. And then this foliage back here, the green one, this is huckleberry. Uh, probably one of my another one of my favorite materials. The chocolate feathery material is agonis, which is related to eucalyptus. And then I'm going into sword fern. So let's see. Sword fern's just gonna add a little bit more line here. Just kind of sort of weaving through, sort of. Just turn that around, let's see. All right, so as I'm just placing all of this in, what else, do we have any other questions? Yes, sure. Cynthia says, I'm just curious, is it possible to use a combination of silk and live flowers? Aha! Uh -huh. Or must the whole thing be fresh? That is a great question, and I think I actually forgot to put that down on my list, so thank you for pointing that out. Okay, so these days with silks and dried and preserved and tinted and 
all of that um, all becoming on trend right now. Yes, you can use these materials. However, we do encourage um, most um, fresh as you can, just because they're just so different to work with, right? Like uh, silk uh, materials have the wires in it and you can bend and break and leave it on the counter for two days and come back and it's still alive, right? You can't do that with a fresh flower. Once that fresh flower breaks, you're done, right? Once you cut it too short, you're done. If you cut a silk flower too short, you just gotta wire and tape it back together and put it in, right? So yeah, very, really great question. Okay. I just love sword fern. This guy, where do you want to go? So Marisa, Rick wants to know, is that sword fern or flat fern? Okay, I'm gonna leave that to teacher Michelle. It's both. It's both. Because <laughs> I have heard both too, um, but... How about a dagger? Dagger? That's the other name. Oh, really? Yeah, flat sword and dagger. Flat sword and dagger. Okay, so we got about 15 minutes left. Let's see. I don't want to forget anything. Okay, so let's move on to the final exam. So with the final exam, again, everything... Like all the questions that are in the final exam, you will find all the answers in the course, even down to the identification. And the identification portion, Leanne uses every single flower and material in there. Yes, you may have to dig deep and find like, where did she use it? Um, but it's in there. So you are more than welcome to go back into the course and refer to it for your answers for your final exam, okay? So, let's see. The most common boo-boos in the final exam in the written portion. Identification, oh, excuse me, when you're defining, excuse me. I'm actually going to, this is getting heavy. Uh, let's just put, why not? This one's just, let's just put the last one right here. Okay, and let's see if we can just put these guys in somewhere. I don't know, maybe maybe at the end. Okay, um, so defining things. And I'm sure most of you that have taken the basic course that may have gotten this question incorrect. An example, monochromatic, okay? just putting one color, we want a little bit more than that, okay? So that's one um, example. Let's see, let's grab, ooh. I don't even know if I'm gonna end up putting like a lot of flowers in this one because this is very, it's very Pacific Northwest. Let's put some heather right here in the middle. I think I should probably start putting these sunflowers in because I'm not gonna have any room. So let's see. Then we go into, oh, this is one that we see a lot. Pave, okay, what does pave mean? If we put, cut the stem short, mm, that doesn't really define what pave is. So we really want to expand upon that definition. Does anyone have a question? Oh, Michelle yes. does, just shot him, just shoot him. Just shot him out. Yeah. So you mentioned this bouquet looks very Pacific Northwest. Dolores wants to know if it's okay to mix tropical foliage and flowers with more garden style foliages and flowers. Yep, you can, you know, you can literally do whatever you want. Yes, you absolutely can. You know, the greatest thing is when they can trick you with a flower that's from their place that you don't know what it is. So you have to say, what is this flower? I love learning new flowers. Yeah. And you know, um, I, I will I will say though, and you can do that. However, you are running this one risk, in my opinion. Um, well, it's not really my opinion; it's a fact. Um, when you start uh, combining spring flowers with tropicals, remember there is a question on your um, final exam: what are short-lived flowers and what are long-lasting flowers? For the most part, your answers are usually tropical flowers for the long lasting, for the most part. Um, but if you start mixing those two together, uh, tropicals, I mean, sometimes can last for like a month. 
Some can, like anthuriums, those can last for a very long time. Um, so what happens is, is if you do start to mix, the, the springy type flowers, the softer flowers are going to uh, expire faster than the tropicals. Um, so it might look a little bare. Um, so just keep that in mind. So oh, Marisa, yeah. do we have to, do the students have to use certain flowers for their designs? Do students have to use certain flowers for their designs? Um, you are more than welcome to use whatever you want. So you can substitute um, for the materials. So if Leanne um, is using, I don't know, pink roses for something, you're like, I don't like pink or I can't get pink. You can use yellow, you can use whatever color you want. So as long as you, yeah, it hurts. As long as you get the overall project and all the elements and principles are there, um, you can really use whatever you want. I had actually someone the other day, and, and thank you for actually emailing and asking. They were asking if they could um, use Italian, uh, excuse me, bleached uh, ruscus in their bud vase. And I was like, absolutely, that would be really pretty. That doesn't want to go there. Maybe we'll go over here. And this then, is getting heavy. I was just going to say, you've got a big one there. And then uh, Karen also wanted to know, she, in her reviews, was told to work bigger. Her designs were too compact. Mm -hmm. You're a, you work big. Do you have any suggestions for yes. that? Yes. Uh, that took time. <laughs> um, what happens is, typically, um, the... The, like I'm, I'm quite petite, so when I first started, oh, I, I designed in my little bubble. So if you gave me the teacup arrangement, I was so happy. I'm like, I can't screw this up, right? But I would design very, very small. And the, the bigger you are, the taller people design, uh, tend to design really big. So that just came with practice over time. And really now I just design big just to show off, really. So, but, <laughs> but it's perceived value too. Because um, I could take the same materials, cut them very short, right? S same thing. It would still cost the same amount, but it won't look like a lot of money. So I try to make my stuff look really expensive. <laughs> so my customer feels like they're getting the value. Well, I kind of put myself in a little tiffy here because I know once I place this in the, in the vase, I'm going to be lacking a focal point. I mean, even though I have one kind of with the, let's, let's just see if I can make this work. I don't know if I can. Oh no. Oh no. Definitely not putting the white in. Right there in the center there. No. Oh no. See what happens? All you see is that big ball of white. Oh no. Um, maybe the iris? Maybe. Let's see. Let's play with the iris. So while you think, here's a question. Linda wants to know, is there a rule about how many colors to use in an arrangement? Um, yes and no, um, because you can go up to one, which would be, well, I don't want to say just one because I told you not to put that, but you can go up to monochromatic, which is one shade, tints, tones, and shades of one color. Um, or you can go into polychromatic, which ends up being uh, like five, five to seven colors or so. Um, so it's just really what you think, but because here, look, now I'm, I had one, well, if you don't count the foliage, I just had the, the sunflowers. But now we're putting in the iris, so now I'm bringing in two colors. I could bring in a third, but I don't really have any other colors on here. So I don't want to necessarily say there is a rule of thumb. Um, if you start going, going polychromatic, um, it can start to look really busy. Um, but it still can be done, it still can be done very well. Great questions. Let's put an iris way back here. Oof. Can you see it's not even fitting in my hand? <laughs> oh, one. look at the line. Oh, look, did you see the line that it's creating? Can you see they're it? gorgeous. Yes, they're loving this. They're like, oh my gosh, it's bigger than her. Yeah. <laughs> I, need, 
I, I need someone to hold it and I can just actually, I've done that before where I've made really big uh, hand ties where actually someone just holds it and I just design into the person's hand. Um, we need one more somewhere. How about right there? Maybe, maybe. And I think, who is it? It's usually, is it usually John that says that I always have to be big and loud? Yeah, and that, he's the one. Yeah. But he loves it. He's like, the iris. I love the iris. Oh, I got it. I got it. I got it. Let's see. Because the, it's a little dark. So I don't know if this is going to work, but let's just see. What if we tucked these little billy balls down in the center? In between the iris. In between the yes. iris. I can't. It's so it hurts. <laughs> they are loving the iris. They said those iris are so beautiful. You guys, my hand can't um, fit around it. So. You know, while you're talking those, I just want to do a shout out. Your um, YouTube group is amazingly international today. Oh yeah, where is everyone from? We we've got all over the United States, east, west, south, north. It's all here. Portugal, Canada, Trinidad and Tobago, Peru, Australia, Thailand, Singapore, wow. and Iceland. Wow. In addition to so many international, such an international crowd, I do believe my mom is watching. So I want to say hi to my mom and all of you out there in the world. Thank you for joining. Hi, mom. <laughs> hi, mom. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Ah, so here's a question about the classes. How long do the students have access to the lessons? Yes, great question. Um, so you have a year to complete the course, but once the course is completed, you have infinite access for the rest of your life. So, you could always uh, tune, uh, tune back in, like if you're ever like, oh, what was that? way that Leanne pin or well, hair pinned a leaf, you can always go back and uh, watch. Annabella says she uses our classes to learn floral design and English at the same time. Oh my gosh! Oh, that's, that's awesome. great! That's great! All right, we need one right down in here. You guys, when I take a picture of this tomorrow, I don't think it's going to fit in the frame. <laughs> Shout out to Susie. Debbie brought up that she's loving the playlists, and I want to say a thank you to Susie for getting those playlists together. It's so exciting. And shame on me. I never said who was in the house today. I know. Hello. Yeah. Hello. I was too focused on my new glasses. We're just our, your slaves. Well, let's just say thank you, Leanne, Michelle, and Parker, and Susie and Caledonia. I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's all about the star. For those of you that know me, you're like, yeah, that's normal, right? <laughs> all right, so let's... I need to put this down, okay? I can't. <laughs> it's really starting to hurt. And look, see, look, my hand can't even fit all the way around it. So let's just put this aside and call it done. So Dolores, this is when you stop, <laughs> okay? <laughs> <laughs> this is when you stop. All right. So I'm going to take some bind wire and just tie this off. While you tie that off, any tips for inserting those soft stemmed flowers like the iris? Ooh, so yeah. You don't damage them? Yes, great question. So I, with the iris, I actually placed them more into the center so they have support. If I would have come around here just on the outside and then did bind wire and really uh, gave it a nice tight twist, it would basically slice through the um, iris. So uh, like, you know, when, oh, you, when we put like a collar of something around just to give something support, um, that's how I um, typically in, uh, insert my insertions or just kind of loosen your hand too and really, and just kind of like twist when you put in like this twist and it kind of just falls into place. Um, if it doesn't want to go in, then you might have to not use it. <laughs> oh, I thought I did the twist and it didn't. All right, 
how much time do I have? Like a couple minutes? About a couple of minutes. Okay, good. Minutes. Okay. And I have a question for Leanne, because she'll know. How many playlists do we currently have? You know, the tribe has access to three, because I'm going to release one more this afternoon to you. The public has access to two, and Susie is proofing and preparing 10 more. So wow. we'll, be, we'll be releasing them over the next couple of weeks, which is pretty darn exciting. 10 more? So if they go to YouTube and click Playlist, they can see the current public one. If they go to the Facebook group and look in the announcements, they can see the private ones. And the private, um, after a couple of days, I make them public. I just like to give the tribe first dibs at them. Did you hear that, Tulip Tribe? You get first dibs on those. Yay. OK, so before I actually display this in this beautiful vase back here. You missed a stem. I did? Oh, this one. <laughs> this one was my guide. This one was pre-cut, so I don't have to cut that one. Uh, just a few more things. Um, when you get into the identification portion, right? So for instance, when you come across chrysanthemum, we actually want to know the variety. When you come across an aster, we also want to know what kind of aster it is. So think about it if you were to, uh, if you wanted to order asters, I'm not going to give you the answer because, but if you want to, if you just put aster on your order, your wholesaler is going to be like, well, what kind? If you put chrysanthemum, they're gonna be like, what kind? Because there's so many different types of chrysanthemums. So those are probably the most um, common that we that we see as far as identification goes. Okay, you ready? Here we go. You guys see me do this a lot where I put things into the side and balance and stuff, but let's just see if it works. Oh, that's pretty. I don't know if that shows on camera as beautiful as it does in the well, studio. You know, I was planning on having oh, it this way, God. but that's the way that it scooch wants it, to go. Scooch it that way a little bit. This way? Yep. Wow! Perfecto! I did it! And that pain was just for you. <laughs> I think we may be done. Yeah? Or do I have a minute or so? Or... Does this, does, does this mean does this mean wrap it up or <laughs> last 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 minute questions? Um, again, don't ever hesitate to call. Okay, again, if you are part of um, the courses, you have a hundred percent teacher support, and please know. Okay, there is never a dumb question. We have all been there so that's what we're here for please don't ever hesitate to call okay we are here to make you successful okay um i think i'm actually just going to close there's so much stuff that i didn't end up using that i wanted to but it's okay <sighs> thank you so much for tuning in um if you know anyone that would want to watch this share it okay I think next week is with Leanne. Leanne and Daffodils. So Leanne and Daffodils next week. Um, it was, it's always so much fun and such a pleasure. Um, have a great rest, rest of your week and 